Well, I did it. One year is in the books working as an apprentice aircraft mechanic. So what's it been like? Well, in this episode, we're going to talk about just that. Hello and welcome to another edition of Grease Monkey Gab. Random thoughts of an aircraft mechanic from the commute. So 12 months in out of the 30 months that the FAA requires. Now, honestly, it doesn't feel like that at all. But that was something I kind of expected. You know, I've heard it said that the days are long, but the years fly by. And it seems to be the case here too. Of course, having a baby in the midst of all that kinda, <laughs> kinda adds to that too. So naturally, the more I've learned, the more skills I've acquired, the more tasks I've been able to do, and certainly more responsibilities to go along with them. I've said it before, but our shop's bread and butter is doing annual inspections and 100 hour inspections. And you see an awful lot of what general aviation piston aircraft have to offer. You, know, you open up all the panels, drain some fluids, service, you know, inspect everything, service everything. You really learn a lot about how each manufacturer has, you know, chosen to design their aircraft and the systems that they use. You know, I mean, honestly, annuals can get a little repetitive, but when you do open them up, you never know what you're gonna find. And honestly, the bigger the problem, the more you're gonna learn. At least I know the more I've learned. <laughs> The IA I'm working under has been doing this for 35 years, and in the time I've been there, we've had issues that he's never even seen before. So that can definitely keep it interesting. This episode would be way too long for me to tell you, you know, absolutely everything I've learned over the past year. But I did want to make a few points on, you know, some of the ones that stand out. Did learn how to take the wings off a steerman. Never thought I'd do that in this shop. Thanks to some issues we had, I got intimately acquainted with the Beechcraft Baron fuel system. I can use a hand-operated vacuum pump to purge it. I already knew it, but I definitely learned more about the dangers of letting an aircraft sit. You know, anything with an engine needs to be used, or else things just go to crap. And in the case of aluminum airframes and aircraft, corrosion. Oof. So if you're an aircraft owner, get out and fly it regularly, please. It'll make our jobs easier, and it'll definitely make your annual bill lower. I don't really think it's the direction I'm going, but there's definitely a big opportunity in the avionics field right now. I learned, or perhaps I should say I'm still learning how to say, I don't know. <laughs> that was a tough one for me. I was raised to kind of always have an answer for something. But doing this job, there, there's an awful lot I don't know. What an awful lot I learn every day. I am encouraged by the fact that it seems that more and more of Gen Z is actually turning to the trades and not just everybody should go to college. And speaking of college, I learned firsthand the difference of, you know, what you learn when you go to school versus what you learn from on-the-job training being an apprentice. And I plan on having another video specifically on that topic. When I took the light sport class, we ran out of time to really do anything on magnetos. And I can honestly say I've been getting quite the education on them here on the job. Always get a pre-buy inspection. I definitely learned how easy it is to get distracted while you're on the job by multiple airplanes, multiple things going on, and the importance of staying focused on the task at hand and you know the tools you're using at that time. Do you have all of them at the end of the task? And it pains me to say it, but at the end of the day, you just can't fix stupid. You do your best job and you move on. What did you want to know about my first year working as an aircraft mechanic? Already in A&P, what was your first year like? Let us know down below.